We have developed a simpler approach consisting of three simple maneuvers. A single maneuver in the stomach traces almost the entire pancreaticobiliary system and two more maneuvers add to the study of specific target areas in pancreas. This method traces the biliary tree from the hilum till the ampulla of waiter from the stomach itself and can also visualize the entire pancreas and the pancreatic duct from the stomach. Thus, the first maneuver in the stomach gives a near complete idea of the status of pancreaticobiliary biliary system. The other two maneuvers in the duodenum are utilized to augment the information obtained from the first maneuver. It is possible that this approach may simplify learning of pancreatic biliary EUS and may reduce the number of procedures required for training. A little bit about how the echoendroscope should be handled. Uh, it is important that the scope movements should be produced by light and gentle handling. Small movements produce big changes in the EUS image. The scope should be handled like a rope, not like a rod. The two or three fingers of the right hand should be used as a fulcrum for the shaft. Gripping the shaft, an extreme clockwise rotation is only needed for the tail of pancreas and the unsnip process. Both the right left and up down control should be handled with the left hand while the right hand should only be used occasionally for this purpose. A general rule is that anti-clockwise rotation of the scope shows structures anterior to the esophagus, stomach and the duodenum like the liver, gallbladder and suprapancreatic bile duct, while clockwise rotation of the scope shows posterior structures like the pancreas and the aorta. Here you can see how the shaft is being handled. The fingers of the right hand actually gently push the scope sideways and by and large it, they are used as a fulcrum so that the shaft of the scope can rotate over them. It's much like how you use your fingers to play the guitar. It should be soft and gentle. The left hand holds the uh, control section. Control section literally sleeps over the left hand. The right hand controls the shaft farther away from the mouth of the patient. And the rotatory movements, you can see here how the torque or the rotatory movement of the scope are produced by rotating the left hand and using the right hand as a fulcrum. The alpha maneuver is the only maneuver required in the stomach. When we have perfected it, we should be able to visualize the liver hilum, the portal vein, superior mesenteric vein, photomesenteric confluence, splenic artery, common hepatic duct, suprapancreatic CBD, retropancreatic CBD, pancreatic duct and the head, body and tail of the pancreas in one single maneuver. The maneuver starts with the scope at GE junction. The scope is then manipulated along an alpha-like trajectory. The alpha maneuver gives almost all the required information about pancreatic biliary system. The alpha maneuver starts at the G junction with the scope in the anti-clockwise position. At this level, the left lobe of the liver is visualized. Once that happens, the scope is rotated clockwise to the left hand, while the right hand gently pushes the shaft a little to the left. This should bring the IVC and or the hepatic veins in view. Once this is done, the scope is gently pushed down about 2 cm. This should bring the liver hilum in view with portal vein and common hepatic duct. The common bile duct is then traced with a downward 
and slight anticlockwise movement till the margin of the pancreas and portomesentery confluence is seen. The scope is then moved further down with a gentle clockwise and up bend to visualize the head of the pancreas. We also see the retropancreatic common bile duct, pancreatic duct in the head and the ampulla of water in many cases. The scope is then withdrawn a bit to visualize the superior mesentric vein. At this stage, a clockwise rotation of about 100 degrees is done so that the neck and body of the pancreas are visualized. Further clockwise rotation and withdrawal shows the tail of the pancreas and spleen. The movements are then repeated in a reverse order. As you can see here, the movement of the scope resembles an alpha loop. It begins at the GE junction, then traces down to visualize the common bile duct and the portal vein. Then it takes a turn to visualize the head of the pancreas and the superior mesentric vein and then loops taking a 100 degree turn to visualize the body and tail. It is important to remember that the movement of the scope from the GE junction till the head of the pancreas is only about 5 to 6 centimeters. Thus, if the G junction is at 40 centimeters by about 45 centimeters, this downward movement of the alpha loop is complete. Here you can see the imaging starting from the G junction going down for about 5 centimeters and then taking a 100 degree turn, visualizing the body and tail of the pancreas. Here you can see the inferior vena cava and the hepatic veins being brought into view. The scope then is pushed a little down and you start seeing the hilum of the liver. You can see the portal vein and the common bile duct and the liver hilum. Doppler can be applied to check the portal vein and its tributaries. So once the hilum is located, we have to push the scope down and you see that the portal vein and the common bile duct are separating. The portal vein becomes the superior mesentric vein at the confluence while the CBD continues behind the head of the pancreas. So here the head of the pancreas is in view you can see the common bile duct, a faint aniquoid dot in the center, this is the pancreatic duct and above is the superior mesentric vein. The scope is further pushed down tracing the bile duct and we can see now that the pancreatic duct is also appearing. We can see the much more hypoechoic ventral analaga as a triangle here and we can also see the air in the duodenum just beyond the ventral analaga. Thus the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct is traced almost to the ampulla from the stomach itself. You can see the bile duct and the pancreatic duct entering the ventral analaga here. So this gives you a complete information about the head of the pancreas and we withdraw a bit and visualize the superior mesentric vein and the superior mesentric artery. This is the superior mesentric vein and this is the superior mesenteric artery. Once we have seen this, we take a clockwise turn. We turn the scope clockwise and then keep tracing the splenic vein 
to visualize the body and tail of the pancreas. Here you can see the splenic vein at 6 o'clock and the pancreatic duct is also visualized. Further clockwise movement is continued with little withdrawal of the scope. We visualize the left kidney. We continue the clockwise movement and we visualize the spleen and the tail can be nicely visualized near the spleen. It is important to do a reverse alpha maneuver also. Once we have finished seeing the spleen, we start the anti-clockwise movement while at the same time we push the scope down. Here you see a bird-like left adrenal appearing. We continue the movement, see the aorta on the way and Keep tracing the splenic vessels till you reach the confluence. Here you can see the spleno portal confluence coming into the view. The pancreatic duct is also seen. Thus, we saw in this video that the alpha maneuver allows us complete visualization of the biliary system from the liver phylum to the ampullary region from the stomach itself. It also allows us a complete examination of pancreas from the head to the tail from the stomach. And we can also evaluate the pancreatic duct in its entirety from the beginning till the end. In this video, we can see that we are already at the hilum and we are seeing the hepatic artery, the portal vein and the common hepatic duct. The hepatic artery is seen as a round structure while the portal vein is seen as a linear structure which takes the Doppler. The hepatic duct appears to be mildly dilated. The next step is to trace the common bile duct down towards the head of the pancreas. It's a straight and downward movement. See here we are trying to push it, the scope down till the head of the pancreas is seen. Here you see the bile duct entering behind the head of the pancreas. We can also see the portomesentric confluence and the bile duct in the center of the head of the pancreas. The part of the pancreas above the SMB is the neck of the pancreas. So you see the superior mesentric vein, superior mesentric artery below that, the bile duct and now gently pushing allows us to see the pancreatic duct in the head of the pancreas. The scope is pushed a little further to interrogate the papillary area and we are seeing the right kidney with the renal vessels. So here in this picture we are seeing the head of the pancreas, the right kidney and the air in the duodenum. You can also see the IVC at 6 o'clock direction. The bile duct 
and the pancreatic duct are converging towards the papillary area. This is the IVC. So you can see that a large part of the head of the pancreas and the surrounding structures can be visualized from the stomach itself. Once we have seen the head of the pancreas, we come back and turn clockwise and visualize the body of the pancreas tracing the splenic vein. Here you can see the body of the pancreas and the left kidney. Further clockwise rotation will bring the spleen in view and the tail of the pancreas. So the clockwise direction movement is continuing and you see the spleen here. The tail of the pancreas is nicely seen. Visualizing the spleen requires extreme clockwise torque in some cases. Once we have finished seeing the tail of the pancreas, the movement is reversed and we turn the scope anti-clockwise while at the same time pushing it down to evaluate the body of the pancreas again. We see that the left adrenal has come into the view and it appears a bit hypertrophic. The forward movement of the scope is continued and you see the splenic vein joining the superior mesenteric vein to form the confluence. This is an important landmark when staging of pancreas cancer is required. An anti-clockwise turn and scope withdrawal at this stage brings us back to the liver hilum with visualization of CBD and portal vein. Thus we saw that the alpha maneuver is the single most complete maneuver to evaluate the biliary tree and the pancreas. This maneuver alone should provide sufficient information on the pancreas and the level of biliary and pancreatic ductal obstruction even before we enter the duodenum. The sigma maneuver is the second maneuver and it is performed in the duodenal bulb. This maneuver is useful for the investigation of the bile duct, cystic duct and the gallbladder. In our opinion, it is the simplest maneuver to perfect. For the sigma maneuver, the scope is positioned in the duodenal bulb or at the D1-D2 junction with a slight clockwise rotation. At this point, we should visualize the head of the pancreas, the bile duct and the pancreatic duct. If not, then a slight push or withdrawal of the scope should be done to visualize these ducts. Once the bile duct is seen, the scope is gently turned anti-clockwise, keeping the bile duct in view. A little withdrawal of the scope may also be necessary. Care should be taken not to compress the duodenal wall with the scope, otherwise the bile duct will not be seen. The anti-clockwise movement is continued till we see the cystic duct insertion, the gallbladder and the liver hyaline. Once that is done, the scope is then again rotated clockwise with slight insertion to view the bile duct approaching the papilla.
This is the pictorial representation of the sigma maneuver. You begin in the D1 to visualize the common bile duct, pancreatic duct and the portal vein. Take an anti-clockwise torque along with withdrawal till you see the cystic duct, gallbladder and hilum. After that, you turn clockwise again to revisualize the CBD, pancreatic duct and portal vein. The scope is introduced into the duodenal bulb and the imaging is started. Once the bile duct is seen, you turn anti-clockwise till you see the hilum, the cystic duct and the gallbladder, then turn clockwise to see the bile duct again. Here the echoendoscope is positioned in the duodenal bulb and we immediately see a dilated bile duct. You see we turn anti-clockwise and withdraw the scope a bit and you see two anechoic structures, the dilated bile duct and the gallbladder. The gallbladder is now properly seen on more anti-clockwise movement and little more withdrawal. You see the liver hilum here, then the clockwise movement is started again. We see the bile duct in the pancreas along with the pancreatic duct. Both these ducts are now dilated and we can see them till the papilla. Here we are in the duodenal bulb. You can see the portal vein. We are withdrawing and doing an anti-clockwise rotation. You can see two anechoic structures close to the scope. They belong to the CBD and the cystic duct. The anti-clockwise movement is then continued to trace the common bile duct and the cystic duct and the gallbladder appears. You can see the cystic duct nicely. At the same time, the liver hilum is also visualized. <clears throat> A clockwise turn is done after this to trace the common bile duct back towards the pancreas. As the common bile duct enters the pancreas, we also start seeing the pancreatic duct. We trace the common bile duct towards the papilla by a clockwise rotation and we see that the terminal part of the bile duct is dilated. A diagnosis of C is entertained at this point. We can visualize the common bile duct above and the pancreatic duct below, both of them will join at the papilla. Thus we saw that the sigma maneuver gives us detailed information about the superior aspect of the head of the pancreas, the pancreatic duct in the head, the bile duct, the cystic duct and the gallbladder. It is a useful maneuver to perform tissue acquisitions in this region. The third maneuver or the Z maneuver is performed in the second part of the duodenum. This maneuver is useful for investigation of the uncinate process, the ampulla of waiter and the head of the pancreas. To perform the Z maneuver, the scope is introduced into the second part of the duodenum and then it is shortened like in the ERCP. 
The EUS examination is then begun and anti-clockwise movement usually brings the inferior vena cava and the aorta in view. The aorta is followed till a small lymph node or the origin of superior mesenteric artery is seen. The scope is then rotated slowly to extreme clockwise position to visualize the unseen process. After this, the scope is withdrawn a bit and another clockwise rotation is done to visualize the pancreatic duct, the common bile duct and the ampullary region. The common bile duct requires a slight anti-clockwise tilt compared to the pancreatic duct. We may require to fill the duodenum with water to visualize the papilla properly. Here you can see the first anti-clockwise movement to visualize the aorta and then two clockwise rotations, one to visualize the uncinate process and another to visualize the papillary area and the CBD and PD. The scope is passed into the second part of the duodenum and then shortened like ERCP. A clockwise rotation shows the uncinate process. Little withdrawal and another clockwise rotation shows the papillary area. Here you can see that we are in the second part of the duodenum and after shortening the scope we see the spine and the large vessels, IVC and the aorta. This is the inferior vena cava above the spine. IVC is usually seen first and you have to give a clockwise torque to visualize the aorta. Aorta has thick walls and may show calcifications. If you are not sure about IVC or aorta, then a pulse doppler will let you know whether it's an artery or a vein. Once the aorta is localized, you withdraw with a clockwise torque, and in this case, now we are seeing the mesenteric vessels and the alternate process. Clockwise rotation, alternate process, further withdrawal will bring the papillary area with the pancreatic duct and common bile duct. You can see here we are utilizing extreme clockwise rotation but for the bind up a little anti-clockwise torque is required. This is the common bind up. Once we have evaluated the entire head and the unseen process, we can choose to trace either the bind up or the pancreatic duct. See here a complete examination of the head is possible with the Z maneuver especially of the alternate process. This is the common bile duct we are visualizing now. Again, we are in the second part of the duodenum. You can see the spine and the aorta. Once 
we visualize the aorta. The scope is withdrawn a little and a clockwise torque is given. The uncinate process should come in view. In this patient, you can see the origin of the superior mesenteric artery from the aorta. We are tracing the superior mesenteric artery and you can see the superior mesenteric vein just above the superior mesenteric artery and the head of the pancreas above that. So, a good relationship of the mesenteric vessels with the head and uncinate process on the pancreas can be established with this maneuver. Further withdrawal of the scope and clockwise rotation will bring the bile duct and the pancreatic duct in view. Both the ducts can be traced till the ampulla. Z maneuver is the best maneuver to evaluate small pathologies near the ampulla and the uncinate process lesions. So here you see again the mesenteric vessels, the bile duct, the pancreatic duct and the entire head of the pancreas. You can choose to follow any of the uh, ducts, pancreatic duct or the bile duct. Here you see the superior mesenteric vessels have been traced. Thus we have seen that the C maneuver allows detailed examination of the uncinate process, the papilla and the subpapillary bile duct and pancreatic duct. It is very useful for tissue acquisition from the uncinate process. It is also useful to understand the relationship of the uncinate process with the mesenteric vessels. In this video, we have attempted to describe three simple maneuvers for investigation of pancreatic or biliary region with linear EUS. The alpha maneuver gives an overview of the entire pancreatic obedience system while the sigma and the z maneuvers supplement by giving detailed information about specific areas. These maneuvers may simplify the learning process of linear EUS.